Hey, Paul. Hey, Randy. How you doing, Randy? I'm good. How are you today? Excellent. Excellent. Good. Great. Great. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, so I saw the film the other night. It's great. It's funny. It's heartwarming. It's, it's dramatic. Tell me, how did you uh, how did you come across the project? Well, uh, I'm not exactly. I think um, well, it was sent to me. It was sent over, and uh, the first thing I was told was Joey Pantoliano was in it, so he's an old buddy who I love him, and I was like, uh, I think we may have, oh, yeah, we did Daredevil together years ago. That's what we did. Okay. Maybe maybe something else. I was just, you know, ready to hop on board if he was doing it, playing his brother. I was like, I'm in, you know, so <laughs> that was the beginning of that, and then they needed the third brother. Somebody had fallen out. And I told them, hey, what about Ray Abruzzo, who's a good friend? And, you know, the three of us know each other, me, Joey, and Ray. So we ended up playing, you know, old brothers. Up. It turned out to be a lot of fun. And now being brothers on, on in the film, um, did that kind of sense of family and togetherness, that transfers over to your real life as well with, the, with Joey Pantoliano? Uh We're not real. What do you mean? We're not real brothers. Is that, what are you asking me? I mean, like... So your your brother's in the movie, but are you also friend, You're also friends in real life too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. I spend many nights uh, hanging out with Joey, you know, on set and off. Yeah, we've known each other for a long time. Mm-hmm. Great guy. So that was Great. my my connection for sure. Yeah. And what was it like working with this fantastic cast? Well, let's see. Had I, who would I have known? I think I don't think I knew anybody. But uh, you know, the real treat was. Uh, oh no, uh, Skyler. Desando. Great. He and I did, I meant to look this up. I think we did the Mick. I got to, don't, don't quote me wrong on this, but yeah, we had just done something together. Uh, I want to say the Mick TV show. I think that was what he was on. Anyway. Okay. And um, so it was, it was a reunion for us. And young Madison Eisner, I knew, was, uh, you know, a rising star. And everybody was terrific. In fact, I was just talking to the director, and he just keeps, he loves calling me and saying, you know, I spoke to this actor and that actor and this crew person and that crew person. Uh, it's just, it was just been a love fest from day one. It was just a real joy. And he, uh, he let us really explore and have a good time and really create what I think, as you saw, you know, looks like a real family. You know. Yeah, it, it really it, it, it translated very well to screen. It was authentic. It was great. Um, I'm curious though, h- how do you go about picking your roles? Uh, me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I read once this walk, and he goes, "I take what comes next." Hmm. So, you know, and I'm sure that's not every little thing that comes around, but I, I kind of, you know, I have a couple of friends that are really choosy and, you know, and very, very, you know, they turn a lot of stuff down. I've, I just have felt I've always been fortunate to, to work in this business. So I've turned a few things down. In fact, I just did an interview talking about one of those that he, the question was, what did you turn down that you regret? I was like, Oh no, I've never answered this before. So um, not that I need to go down that road again, but you know, you take, Take generally take. I've been very very fortunate. Ninety percent of the stuff that comes is been really solid stuff. Some gems, obviously. The Irishman just happened, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, years ago, The Wire. Uh, I got a call from Alexa Fogel, one of the cast director, and to play uh, to be on The Wire. That was an offer, and um, some stuff you got to audition for, but mostly stuff comes in these days, and I've been. Just did a couple of episodes, episodes of SVU and the Banker, mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff happening. I'm just, uh, you know, knocking wood. It's, the, you know, the projects are good, and you go to work. It's That's like, right. Uh, just keep going. Yeah. Um, so you 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 have a a large filmography, large resume. Um, you tend to play a lot of unsavory characters. Uh, I'm <laughs> is there a type of is there a type of role that you'd want to play that you haven't already? Um. Well. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly what role that would be. The answer is yes. There are there is a type of role or a role that I haven't done that I would love to do. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure what that role is. I would. I'm just. You know, I think as actors, we're always 
looking for that next wonderful project that keeps you, you know, that, that, that where you're working with great people and it's that one role that really gets recognized. And uh, that's the one, whatever he is, whoever he is, you know, tall, short, fat, skinny, from wherever he's from. I mean, that one pivotal role that uh, becomes kind of that important piece that, and the reason to get, the reason you want to get that role is just so you can get more of them. You know, it's, it's exciting to be an actor. Um, I love playing detectives and lawyers, you know, week after week. That's fine. And they're good. They're nice parts, but you get that nice little role that kicks you off into the next place. That's what we're all, I think, hoping for. I just saw the Joker recently and that, oh, yeah. that kind of, that kind of character is, I saw that and I went, wow. <laughs> that what a wonderful uh, opportunity for him, and he filled it so be- magnificently. So, yeah, that's Agreed. that's 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 a dream of mine is to get hopefully maybe not necessarily a psycho crazy <laughs> Joker like that, but a role where you could really bring your entire soul into it and hmm. really be able to sing. It's great. And you know, there was a role of yours a couple years back on Entourage that was very memorable to me. Um, tell me, what was your experience like working on that show? Well, that was, I was very lucky. You know, I got uh, my uh, my reps at the time were repping the show, and there was this role, and Doug Allen, the creator, you know, said, perfect, Paul would be great for that. You know, that I started playing a lot of those guys after that, the, the sort of uh, tough studio exec, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and... It was that was a breakthrough actually because it opened the door for a lot of you know going from a lot of mobsters mm-hmm. and low lives to this uh, these super high powered you know CEO type guys usually with an edge usually mm-hmm. a little dangerous usually a little you know left of the of the wrong side of the tracks you know doing illegal stuff and all that played a lot of those things but it was a great it was great you know I dove in. Mm-hmm. And uh, it felt like a natural progression, sat down with those guys, became, I knew Adrian for a long time before that. Hmm. And uh, it seemed to just gel. It was great. I got to become friends with Phil Mickelson, who was my golf coach, Hmm. you know, taught me to play lefty. And literally, you know, we had, we had some coaching sessions together and it was, uh, it was a thrill. It was an absolute thrill. I actually, I don't remember uh, I don't remember you guys doing much uh, golf thing. I remember a lot of yelling, though. <laughs> well, probably yelling over the golf thing, right? Right, exactly, right. right. <laughs> no, I had my I had my long putt that I sunk. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. As Phil Phil Mickelson, you know, coached us on, made sure he, there was a, a little huh. uh, a little trough in the grass that the ball, you know, he made it. He said, "Let me get a twenty foot pipe," and he pressed mm-hmm. it down into the grass <laughs> and made like this little path for the ball to go in, so I could sink it. Wow. But uh, it was very exciting to, to work with those guys. Cool, cool. So do you prefer TV to film or film to TV? Or are they or are they pretty much uh, equal to you? They're equal, yeah. you know. Um, I, I I love, it's my favorite place to be is, you know, on set or even in my trailer. I love just being on set. If the, world, the rest of the world stops and I could relax, you know, and study get get to work and uh so it really i just enjoy you know as long as it's a nice atmosphere and it's warm and not too cold <laughs> yeah. uh i'm i'm very pretty easy going i just like to i like to work you know good people as well as people aren't screaming and yelling their heads off and they know pretty much what they're doing i'm happy to be there that's great i mean uh, being on a set like you know scorsese said is is in a different stratosphere but uh, you know, but yeah, I'm happy to work wherever it is. Right. And now, how do you get into a role? How do you prepare? Is it just memorizing the script, or do you kind of go in a, a different kind of headspace? What's that process like? Well, you know, you have your special ones that sort of stand out. But um, let's see. You know, I think what happens is after you know year after year, decade after decade, you, you kind of, I, I equate it almost to being a musician, you know, like mm-hmm. a studio musician almost. 
Okay. You call in, you need, you're doing a record. Hey, go get uh, Joe Smith. He does the best guitar solos in town. You know, and you're, you're uh, Tom Petty, rest in peace. So you're somebody, you know, and you go, God, we need, we need just a great, you know, flute mm -hmm. solo. And you call in your top studio guys and they come in. They don't need a lot of rehearsal. They've been doing it mm -hmm. for decades. They, they, they pull out their acts and they play the most beautiful solo. Sometimes this first time around, you know, yeah, and yeah. Um, and it's kind of like that, you know. Get a good. I'm considered a character actor, you know, and mm -hmm. you know I get called in and I've done it a lot now over the years. So I'm gonna. I got a lot of a lot of a big big bag of tricks. A lot of you know. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring something, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, and and so I think oftentimes they connect. You know, oh wow, this this feels a little like something I did 20 years ago, and you don't even know you're doing it, but you're, it's it's like like music to me. It's like painting. You know, you're mm -hmm. you're using some of the old stuff. You it, it becomes something with the new stuff. It's very collage. It's not cerebral to me at all. It's very very mm -hmm. guttural. You know, it's all very instinctual for me, and it happens in lots and lots of hours and hours of you know, a lot of repetition, but, you know, a lot of it's the, you, you know, it it becomes you after a while. It's, it's a kind of, right. kind of dance, not to sound too watchy fartsy, but it is, <laughs> it is kind of that way for me. I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of actors do a lot of sort of writing and bio biographies of the character and where they came from. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't do a lot of that. I do it if I need to, especially right. when I'm playing a, a real guy. You know? Okay. Now, you mentioned earlier um, that you're always working, you're always looking ahead, but from your extensive filmography, your career, are there any highlights that stick out? Yeah. I mean, just as you said, okay, The Wire sticks out, Tombstone sticks out, uh, True Romance sticks out, you know, Three Stooges sticks out. Uh those, you know, those are the ones that just jump out at me that, you know, um, uh, that were, you know, unique situations, kind of broad characters that I really had to dive into a whole other, whole other body, a different skin, if you will, you know, yeah. um, I, I could keep going, but those are, <laughs> those are to name a few, you know. So I'm curious, what do you hope audiences take away from this film? Well... It's a Christmas movie. Um, it's about Christmas Eve. It's a Christmas movie, you know. It's a beautiful <laughs> little story. Uh, fascinating, you know, background with these guys. I mean, it's a it's it's a wonderful Christmas movie. Uh, a fun, you know, any movie I think that has a, a feast of food in it of some kind is always um, fun to watch. Right, and this is a classic Italian Christmas feast of the seven fishes, where they put together, uh, you know, oysters and bacala and stuff, mm -hmm. stuff, anchovies and shrimp, and you know, it's a whole big feast that we do. We do right. our movie, as you saw, right. and uh, it's just a joy. It's a nice little family movie for the for the holidays. And now, Paul, are you Italian yourself? Do you have Italian? No, no, I'm from not. Jewish background. Yeah, oh, Russian, okay. Russian, Austrian, Jewish background. Yeah. Because I, I was going to ask, is it typically normal the, the seven fishes, the, the feast of seven fishes? I I know a lot about you know I have a lot of I played a lot of Italian, so I've I've been <laughs> in the culture a lot. This I never heard of before this, so I'm uh, okay. it's new to me. I'm learning about it. Yeah. Cool. Well, the film's great. Um, I want to congratulate you on that. Um, are there are there any other projects right now that you can talk about? Yes, there are. I mean, okay. uh, I mean, yes. I mean, Feast of Seven Fishes opening November fifteenth. Go see it. We're very excited about that. But uh, I obviously the Irishman just opened, which I have a tiny little role in. Nice little scene. I don't know if you got a chance. Have you seen that yet? Not yet. I'm waiting for. It on, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out soon. Yeah. Yeah. No, you'll see it. Uh, I have a nice little role with uh, Pacino and Ray Romano in that. Great, great. Um, that was a whole other 
you know, world to be a part of with those guys, um, those giants. Uh, I'm also opening, uh, there's this premiere next Thursday for a movie called The Banker with um, uh, Anthony Mackie and uh, Samuel Jackson. Nice. Wow. Wonderful uh, biopic. I just did uh, have a little arc on uh, Law & Order SVU. Got a, uh, an HBO project I'm going to work on called Grace with the wonderful director Paolo Sorrentino. I can see things. A wonderful movie called All Rise with Jennifer Hutchins, Jeffrey Wright, and um, several others. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Are, there any, are there any actors or filmmakers that you'd want to work with that you haven't already? Uh, well, you know, you do a scene with Pacino and De Niro, it's kind of, you hit your, <laughs> that's the home run. But, um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's a handful of actors I'd love to work with. Um, um, talking about doing something with, uh, well, there's, there's a, there's a handful, there's a bunch. I mean, off the top of my head, uh, I'd love to work with John Malkovich. He's always been, a, you know, a hero of mine and, uh, I love John Turturro. He comes to mind. Um, gosh, uh, worked with Walken. I've worked with worked with Dennis Hopper. I've worked with a lot of a lot of great actors. I'm very fortunate. Uh, yeah. both, uh, so you know, uh, but yeah, there's there's a bunch. I'd have to put my thinking cap on and really, mm-hmm. you know. But again, it's it, what happens is you get involved with a good project, and inevitably it's like, whoa, you get to work with this guy, this mm-hmm. woman, and that person. It, you know, I remember doing a series called In Plain Sight, and um, Mary McCormick, the lead, was on E. So a lot of those actors came on board to work with us, and, you know, Alice and Janney shows up for a guest star a couple of episodes. Hmm. And here I am working with the, the great Alice and Janney, and that was just a surprise. So that's kind of what happens. I think it's, the okay. surprises are, are, are as exciting as something may be choose a plan well Paul um, yeah you, like I said you've got a great career and you've got plenty more years to come you're fantastic and I want to see you as a nice guy one of these one of these days <laughs> I appreciate and a, that I appreciate and a, and a, that a non-villain but um, this film is great it's, it's all yeah. about fa- family and, and you know the holidays and it's, yeah it's I don't really kill anybody great. in this one <laughs> yeah, and, I, yeah, yeah. and I, I stay alive I've got a lot of death. I'm making a death reel. I have about 30 deaths. I'm going to do, you know, the death. Oh, okay. That's funny. I so think, I got uh, that in the works. I think you're tied with Sean Bean because he's died a lot of times in his movies too. Sean Bean? Uh, no, I guess I think the guy that holds the record is, um, <laughs> oh, what you doing? I was just watching, uh, I was just reading an interview with him. Oh, gosh. I can't remember his name. But there's guys that have a lot more than me. But I'm I'm up there. <laughs> Okay. Has, you know, 30. I'm up there. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Look for cool. it on YouTube eventually. I'm going to get that video up there. I know I, I Steve Buscemi has one. Yeah. He's got a, a wonderful deaths reel. I got I to gotta put one up there. Yeah, do it. That'll get a lot of hits, I'm sure. I got some good ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Paul, thanks so much. It was great speaking with you. Oh, check it out. All right, man. Thanks for having me.